live our world in our world right now, you know. So this is uh, a detail of uh, how many times have you shot in Chicago? Um, I did uh, two pictures in Chicago. Yeah. So this is the other shot of Chicago. That's a detail of that shot. And when that you is say another detail, detail of is Chicago. it a detail of the composite, of the total composite? Yeah, it's a total shot. Okay. Yeah, it's a detail of the total shot. So this is just a detail wow. of Chicago. Mm -hmm. So you get yeah. to see. So there, it's you, you know, you get the idea. It's about pictures within a pictures. This is from my bird migration series. Oh, you mentioned I told that, yeah. you about. Yeah. yeah. So that's in Nebraska. In Nebraska, thirty-six hours of photographing. Um, yeah, everyone's been thirty-six hours in Nebraska. You have to do One of the most beautiful yeah. things I've ever seen in my life. This is a uh, 36 hours photographing the faithful. And if you look at this, you can actually see time change through the walkway. It's like a clock face. You can see the shadows rotate along with the actual face of the clock. How long does it take to It takes me a month to edit, and it could take four months of me working with my retoucher to craft the finished image. We have, uh, I have assistants. Brian has been an integral part of this from the beginning. and. Um, you know, I have a team of people that actually look at these pictures, we rip through them, and then I make a huge print after four months of post work. And then I rip up, you know, basically mark up the, that giant print, goes back again, and we, we you know, we, we correct everything. So the whole idea is that in the end, when you look at my work, it's, you don't feel our hand, you know, there's no hand in the picture. It's seamless, that's a detail of just the image of, of uh, yeah, of, um, I'm sorry, uh, Old Faithful. Yeah, so here is, this is a detail. So what you would have seen prior to this uh -huh. is a picture of the whole image, day to night, of uh, the Grand Canyon. This is what, the detail, this is a detail of the Grand Canyon. So, day to night, that's wow. moonlight, yeah. Wait a minute, this, this the detail? Just a detail. Where's the whole picture? It's, it's gonna be in the front of the book. The, I'm, I only have so How many, many signatures. It's, the, it's uh, two pages, uh, the, the actual main image, but the detail is four pages. <laughs> so that's what they're gonna print on the uh, gatefold? Yeah. On the back side? Yeah. And then what's gonna be on the next gatefold? So the next page? gatefold is, there's a, another image that, um, so uh, I, I think there's a second, uh, yeah, there's a, so this image on this, where is it, on this page? Yeah, it flips like this. So, um, this image is actually a detail of all the people and the dogs and all the stuff that I get in the foreground of the image. It's like another photograph of within that. And then when you flip the page, you open into this and now you see the entire detail of it. So it's really, um, like I said, it's, a, it's like picture within a picture kind of thing. Must have been quite a challenge for the printer. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. You, because my work is so, they had the guy who's the greatest living separator Literally in, in the world, this guy, he's 78 years old, I think now, and he's the guy that, that did my separations, and he's done the best, the greatest art books that Tasha has ever done, all the best. And, and they, they had to use him because this, my work is so subtle, because the color light changes in my picture, there's too, too much magenta, too much red. And they based all of his separations, his match print were my master prints I made an entire set of master prints. So I just didn't give him, you know, an inkjet print. You know, here, match this. No, 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 no. I gave him a target that was way beyond what most people give him. And when you work with the Italians, they love that. You know, just go for it, baby, you know? And they, you give them a higher target, they get excited and they push the boundaries. So this is, you're missing the picture. This is my shot of, um, of Yosemite, right? It's, uh, that's the overall day to night. This is a detail. You know, again, you can, if you look closely, I, I, I wish everybody could see that you, you feel free tonight, you'll go through it. And then this is, and then you flip the page, and, oh, I'm missing the detail, okay. There is another detail, I think I'm, I'm missing a signature. Um, this is um, <clears throat> Santa Monica Pier, and so you see this area here. That's that. You can actually see a guy being arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Did, did they move? Have, did you have to move the sequence of images because of where they were landing in, the, in a given signature, uh, so that the densities would be? Yeah, you. They, it's it's really how they print it. So we laid the book out, 
and then the mastery of these guys, and it's like magic show. They know how to, they can, they can keep the signatures going in a certain way, but they understand if they have too much blue right. on this side or too much yellow yeah. on that side, it's it's, it stuff. affects everything. And they, these guys were amazing. I mean, just amazing. So, they, so this is it. Yeah, this is a, <coughs> yeah, this is a night detail. Sorry, the picture I did of um, called Jennings Beach, and it's really beautiful the shot. It was. Uh, uh, and this is a detail I was given a, a commission by the United S uh, States Embassy to give a gift to the Canada on their 150th. So I did a day to night of Canada 150. This is a detail of it. And you can actually see, um, uh, you know, the, the Camilla and um, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Prince there approaching. And you can see as time changes, they uh, arrived, they're greeted now by uh, Justin uh, Trudeau and his family. Uh -huh. Now they're hearing the ceremony, and this is wonderful. And as time changes, you'll see, there's Justin Trudeau, he's here. So he and his wife appear in this like 10 times. The gift was given to the National Gallery of Canada. It was displayed there, and I happened to be there getting a private tour, and all of a sudden, someone comes to me, she says, Stephen, you're not gonna believe someone wants to see you. And it is the Prime Minister uh -huh. and his wife, and he walks over to me and he goes, oh my God, he goes, your photograph, every memory that my wife and I have of that day wow. is in your picture. Wow. Yeah. That was just an ultimate compliment. No, that's what he said to me. He spent 30 minutes with me just freaking wow. through this picture. Wow. Yeah, he just said, oh my God, this, and I remember that, and yeah. So this is, um, this is day to night of, this is, this is beginning with moving into the animals. Uh, I did this of Canada. Um, these are, are orca whales. It's the only place in the world where orcas actually feed. Um, not feed, excuse me, where orcas go to a spa treatment. There are these rocks and they're called, um, you know, uh, rubbing rocks. And so they go and they rub themselves and it's like incredible. And somebody came up to me after my TED talk and he goes, you'd love to do a day tonight where I work. I go, where do you work? He goes, it's a place called Robes and Bite. He goes, these whales, the only place in the world this happened. They, all these family whales come in and you've got kayakers, you've got seals, you've got bald eagles, you've got cruise ships. And they go, and they all coexist. He goes, yeah. And I said, oh, I gotta go. And so I got there. The luck, I can't even tell you. He told me, well, we've only had three reports of maybe three families in the bite, and we don't have any idea if they're going to come in. I found this location. I set up on a, on a cliff for 36 hours. I never slept. I watched that moon rise, and I actually watched it set. It was transformational. And I had a walkie-talkie from the scientists so I could hear these whales coming into the bite. And I'll show it, in, it's in my show, but you'll actually hear the sound of the orcas. We saved the recording of it. And at one point, there was a, a, a humpback came in. And you hear it's like Pavarotti, you're Whoa! compared to all the orca sounds, like oh, what the hell? And all of a sudden the or, you know, the humpback breaches, you know. So it was uh, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, it's an amazing place. To give you an idea. And you have that on film. See this, yeah. This is look at this. Yeah, oh it's in the picture, yeah. Look at this. Well, not film. Not film. Yeah, I this is a detail of just that one part of the photograph. It gives you an idea of what's going on. Good to hear your passion about speaking about your project. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So, so it's ten a, years of my life. You're you know? on a lift, right? Oh yeah, I'm on a crane. This I'm on a scaffolding but, for. But, so this is, uh, of course, Stonehenge. Mm -hmm. Now let me just f tell you one thing. Stonehenge does not allow people in it anymore. Right. Okay, right. it's only or if, like a head of state. It's a, yeah. only like a private thing. So the one day I'm shooting, it's taken about eight months to get permission, and I'm with the guy who actually brought Obama into Stonehenge. He's like the main guy. And he's looking at this, and all of a sudden, um, it's the afternoon lights starts coming in, and he's like, um, "Oh my God!" I go, "These people come with this gothic clothing, you can see." And there's a, I go, "What? It looks like something out of Dark Shadows, you know, that old TV show from mm -hmm. the '70s." And they're, and he, I go, "What? Who are these people?" He goes, "I can't believe you're getting this." I go, "What? This must be the one day a year they allow the pagan wedding." Oh. And so oh. one day a year they allow a pagan wedding. Oh wow! So it was an actual pagan wedding <laughs> inside of Stonehenge, and so they became this integral part of my photograph. Completely luck. I had no wow. clue that this was going to happen. No planning or anything. So like before this, you'd see the whole image. This is just a detail, right? Again, you'd see the whole image. This is a detail of uh, my shot from um, a Bass Rock. You'll see this stuff tonight. Um, this is Amsterdam. He's nuts. <laughs> He's fucking nuts. This is um, <clears throat> one of the craziest pictures about color that I've ever 
sometimes. And it's you, you. These are tulips, and oh. you're seeing the color of light effectively change the color oh. of a tulip, right? And it's, oh, so it, they're it's, all the same shade. They're, they're all the same shade, yeah. It's all, when you get to here, that's a different color, but that is all the same color. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty crazy. And they did a phenomenal job creating this on water. It was just yeah. uh, amazing. So you mean if we get magenta instead of red, it's like not our fault, it was the light? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, people look at my work and they always go, what the fuck is he doing with color, you know? And I'm not doing anything with color, but I'm putting the color of light over 10 or 12 hours, yeah. it's changing. Yeah. And so your perception of color changes because you can't go neutral in my photographs. You know, Jay taught me this when I'd go into his room, he'd have played this game, he has this like color room that you'll see in the film, and he pulls down shades and your brain starts going, okay, I'm now in blue light, blue light, blue light. And then he opens the shade to daylight and you get like this magenta flash, you know. It's like, yeah, oh, the, the, oh, the opposite, right, yeah, yeah, the opposite, was it green or? When, when is it a green? open yeah. the shade, Everything else outside the streets looks cyan. Like cyan, right, right, cyan, right, uh, right. That's where the magenta shade, right? You're right. Yes, right. right. I, I, I was saying the blue shade would be magenta. So um, anyway, that's what your brain does, right? Because you're, you're trained to neutralize things. But you can't do that in my photographs, you see, because the, the color changes so suddenly. And so what happens is you actually, it creates, people see my prints, big prints in the gallery, there's actually almost like a, 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 a optical, um, Sort of like dissonance. That yeah, dissonance that happens. Like a, it's called like similar contrast. It's a vibration. And um, this is Sacre Coeur, and this picture I call Sacre Coeur selfie. If you look carefully, um, so that's a detail of Sacre Coeur, and then this is a detail. These are all people that are more interested in sharing the moment than oh, actually the experience itself. Uh, 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 yeah. Which is increasingly the what you oh. see in the world. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it's I can't even tell you. I just did my last day tonight. I was in Iceland shooting the Blue Lagoon, and I cannot tell you how many people couldn't even bathe without having their cell phones with them. <laughs> to, it, it's in, it's it's really a uh, almost an epidemic. This is um, the Tour de France. So again, the the entire race is in this picture. So this is the morning. You see people start to ride their bikes. People like to come out and say, oh, I rode on the route to the Tour de France the day of the race. This is the beginning of the women's race. As time changes, you can see across the Arche de Triomphe, you can actually see this is the midday parade. Now it's the afternoon, boom, five o'clock, the jets fly overhead, the men's race starts. That's the guy in the yellow jersey. And as time changes, that is the actual person who wins the last reg, leg of the Tour de France. So it is truly the entire story of the day in one now, picture. Did you know the planes were gonna come over? Yeah. Did you know where they were gonna be? No, so lucky. I, mean, just, I just caught the moment, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's over there. No, and that's exactly where they were based in time. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. By the way, that's the one reason that I will be buying this book, because my wife, insist that we're home every July so she can watch that damn race on TV. <laughs> we cannot travel in July because of that fucking race. So this is... Um, Language. This is... Uh, <laughs> that is the yellow jersey. You can see that. That's the yeah. kind of yellow jersey. And now look at this. This is another detail. Nobody, Whoa, you never see that. this. Look at the detail in this. You can actually freeze. see the relief, the freeze. You can't see this from the street level. Wow. It doesn't exist for most people. Huh. You know, and that's the fun part of what I'm doing. I'm trying to give people a, a, this narrative story and seeing these things in ways that you never could see them. Are before. any of these people looking at the plane? Yeah, yeah, you can see them. Some of them are looking up here. You see these people up here, their heads are turned. And a lot of them actually are. Here are the police, here's the TV guys waiting for the race as they're, they're coming across. Are you in a crane? No, I'm on a, on a, on a, on a rooftop. Uh, oh. um, yeah, that was incredible so, so. how I got permission. Mm -hmm. It was this amazing rooftop that um, no way I get in, and I happen to have a friend who was the, uh, he was the, the previous CFO of, of City, City Corp, and he knew the advertising, the chairman of the advertising agency that owned that building, and he made a personal phone call for me, wow. and bingo, I got in, and that was it. That, I knew the view I wanted, but I just didn't know if I could ever get in. So this is Vienna, um, Sch Schoenbrunn Palace, um, really just crazy place. Um, and this is, of course, Venice. St. Mark's Square. St. Mark's Square. That's a detail of that mm. photograph. 
So look at that. So that's that's a detail. I'm that's standing the in the square, and my pictures yeah. don't have that detail. From yeah. standing in the yeah. square. It, 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 it's again, I'm I'm working on such a large, um, yeah. you know, detail level. Again, I, I and I'll talk about this. I feel like where we're going in photography is going to be a point where photographs actually begin to look like windows, where the the concept of of a, what I call a visceral experience allows you to see things and information, render information, that begin to mimic what the eye actually experiences. So this is a detail of that or as well. Or more than the eye experiences. Or more, mm -hmm. yeah, to a certain degree, yeah. How do you keep images in registration if you're floating on a crane? Is it the camera? If, I, if my, I, I usually work I get with your huge cranes, and the other thing is um, it, everything's about wind. And so mm -hmm. I don't shoot, and if I can't go up in anything mm -hmm. over and a five to And it'll just 10. stay in one spot, yeah. one oh, yeah. track. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is um, uh, also Venice from the top of uh, San Giorgio. And then this is a detail. But your that. platform can't move at all during no. this. No, 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 no. So, I mean, I, yeah. No, it's, 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 really it's you have no idea. I, say, I have like grid systems set up. I mean, I have, now with Live View, it, it allows me to do things that I could never do. The old days, if I got excited and hit my camera, I used to start crying because I knew that this was going to be 40 minutes of retweaking to try to, because I couldn't see. I had to shoot a picture, look at it, shoot a picture, look at it, mat, try to match the grid through these tiny movements, which is complete insanity. But now there's such resolution in live view that I can do it like that. You know, I can literally dial it in and uh, it's like game changing for me. So this is um, day to night, of course, the uh, Regatta Historica, which is one of the most famous races. And, um, and I, of course, these are boats, by the way, that are exactly the same and the costumes that they wore in 1490. Six, so wow. incredible. Have That's it. Look at this. That's a oh, detail wow. of this. That's oh. a detail of this photograph. Look at their faces. <laughs> it looked like a Canaletto. I, I love Canaletto, and I've been inspired by his paintings. And I used Canaletto as my scout. That was the thing that was just so amazing. Yeah. This is in Vienna. No, oh, this is Venice. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's also that's the night side of the picture. This is, of course, uh, the Easter Mass. It took me. Um, Give you an idea of this, the resolution of this photograph. This photograph at 300 DPI, the native resolution is a hundred, it's 136 inches wide at 300 DPI. Wow. How's that for wow. a big file? What does that mean in English? In English, it means it's big. You can, you can it's look, really big. It means that the finest resolution, yeah. which most people say, well, oh, don't make my print any bigger because you start the up res at a certain right. size. My best resolution is actually at 136 inches wide. That's just, a, I mean, this wow. image I could go like, you know, feet. easily 11 here? feet. So what? Did you get the Pope in the face? Yeah, the Pope is in the photograph 10 times. Oh, cool. He actually, here, let me show you what it's gonna look like. So he, this is a detail. Of course, this is Michelangelo's dome, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is considered one of the greatest architectural, mon uh, you know, things in history. Uh, it's a really fascinating story about um, how Michelangelo went about to do this and uh, how important it was to him. This, of course, is the detail now, and you will see the Pope 10 times in this photograph. I call it my Where's Waldo of Pope Francis. <laughs> <laughs> Including the Pope yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's part of the uh, yeah, 10, yeah. Oh, you see, he's all hidden, he's, and you can see him here. Yeah, let's see. You can see him, look, there he is. Oh, yeah. You see him over here. Uh, he's is he over here. Oh, no, he's in his little I mean, Pope mobile. Yep, it's there he is, he's in his Pope mobile. There he is again, he's in his Pope mobile. Here he is over here. Here he is over here. Here he is over here. There he is over there. It's, you know, I gotta tell you the story. I'll tell you, I'll tell it tonight, but I had uh, an opportunity. Uh, the, the head of Ted, uh, the curate of Ted, has become a friend of mine. He called me and he said, so I was telling him about this project. I can't get, and I know he's very involved with Vatican and he was trying to help me get access. And even he couldn't get me access. And lo and behold, a guy emailed me. A, 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 one of the, uh, he's a priest in the Vatican, Facebooked me on instant messenger. Mr. Wilkes, I love your day to night work. He says to me, I want to use your day to night of Paris for my little book and so on and so forth. And I'm like, oh my God, from so-and-so from the Vatican. And I'm going, this guy's from the Vatican. This is what a, what, a, what, a, what a gift this is. So I write him back. I said, no problem. I'm right. happy Use to give it. you my picture. Yeah. Just give me name credit with my copyright notice. And by the way, maybe you way. can help me. <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm trying to do this for two and a half years to capture the majesty and the breath of Easter Mass within the Vatican. Do you think you could help me? 
oh, I'd love to help you. <laughs> and that proceeded wow. to give me this opportunity. He scouted, he gave me this location. Oh and and uh, I had this, this place. And uh, the day before I do the picture, I go to the Vatican Museum and I go into the Vatican Museum. <laughs> and there's only one drawing of the Vatican in the entire museum. And that drawing was done about 300 years ago. And it is exactly oh. this view. Oh. A panoramic oh. like this. Mm -hmm. So I knew I was in the right spot, you know. It was really amazing. So this, this is, of course, the dome. That's the 10 popes. And uh, so the guy from, the, the, the guy finished the story about the, uh, Ted. He says to me, I said, I got the picture. I send him the picture to say, hey, by the way, Bruno, I got the picture I wanted to share with you because you were so kind to try to help me. And he looks at, he goes, oh my God, talk about timing. He goes, you have to swear to secrecy, six months. The special guest speaker last year is the Pope at TED. I want to open his wow. talk with your photograph. Oh. Oh. Let me tell you, a as, a, yeah, as, a, as a Jewish kid from Long Island, <laughs> open for the Pope, it does not get any better. <laughs> it just doesn't get any better. So, my father was like in heaven going, yeah! <laughs> so is this TED talk on? Yeah, yeah, you it? can watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they show the photo of it? Oh, you well, they know the tank. The tank. They show the, 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 the on the actual on the yeah. video of that. You don't see it, but in the the TED audience, who's like the who's who in the world, they're all there. The image comes up, and Bruno proceeds to point out the ten popes in my picture. <laughs> you know, and it was amazing. Anyway, and this is a detail, and this was a very poignant moment because these two priests were walking by, and this guy was this beggar. He just was reaching like this for to get their attention and it was just this moment and becomes the anchor of my photograph this is uh, uh, Sienna. Sienna so this is Sienna. one of the most and this is probably out of all my photographs the most powerful narrative story picture I've ever made um, and these are the things I, I won't be able to share tonight because we don't have enough time but I but like this photograph I wanted to do the Palio um, I've been there once I, I thought it was the most extraordinary event I've ever experienced so I, I knew I wanted to do a day tonight but it's an 18 you know this is an 18 hour photograph and the actual race itself takes 90 seconds so I spent 18 hours waiting for this thing to happen and in 90 seconds I got to get this picture now the Palio is actually the race is fixed let's just be straight out about it okay the each Contrada tries to negotiate with the other Contrada and they actually begin to fight with each other as they're lining up so when one guy says you know you're gonna let me win right because I'm going to give you X amount of uh, you know, euro my, my fur, right you're gonna do it because you. I'm not doing anything. And then they start hitting each other, and now the horse is going, <laughs> and, so, and they're trying to get him in line. Meanwhile, the sun is setting, it's getting darker, I'm losing a stop every 10 minutes, and I'm going, Dear God, please, I've been 18 hours, the race has to start. I don't have like strobe lights to light the end of the race here. It's That's what's happening, okay? So I go, I'm going through this deep prayer of like, Will they get the actual race? Will they be able to get these horses in line? How many false starts will there be before I actually lose the light? So what ends up happening, you see, this is the sun coming up overhead. Here they have a, um, the, the men actually bring the horses out on this track, which has been completely created for this race. So this is normally a cobblestone street that they bring all this sand and they pack it in and everything. To say it's like, <laughs> If you ran on it, your ankles would break. How the horses even do this is, is extraordinary. But, and then what happens is there's a mass uh, about you know midday, and then now you can see the people coming in, they have this parade that goes on, and then now this is the moment where they begin the race. This is a false start. So you oh. see how these horses are pulling oh, up? Yeah. That's oh. the actual, so again, think about time going this they way. It's getting a false start. A false start. Pile. So this is the false start. This is the actual start of the race. That is the guy winning the Palio, the oh, moment he crosses oh, the finish right. line. And these are all the Contrada going completely and utterly berserk. They're oh. just screaming and just doing everything. So it was, you know, 90 seconds for what was 18 hours. And I, I wish I, when I could show you this big, there's a famous, uh, in, in the uh, Leonardo's, um, uh, excuse me, Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel, there's his depiction of hell. And he has an image of, of the guy with his hands on his face like this. You know, you can see it. it's like this. And you look at this picture. There's an Italian man who's doing this. And I, I was watching and looking at the Palio, and I thought to myself, this has been going on since the 1400s. I said, I could imagine 
you know, I can imagine Michelangelo coming to this event and doing studies on yeah. facial gesture and portraits. Mm. And you could see that in the fact that it's still there. They gesture very much of those moments are still in the crowd and you saw that. So it was kind of an amazing thing. The other thing I'll tell you about this picture, which was really incredible. I had it in the gallery, I showed it for the first time. And this guy, is a, a young couple come over to me and they go, this picture is the most unbelievable narrative story photograph we have ever seen in our life. Could you tell us about it? So I started to describe them too, and I said, you know, I actually saw a documentary, I said, on this, it's called Palio, and it really informed me in a way and just kind of inspired me of just how important well, the, the certain aspects of the ritual are for the whole race. And, you know, and I also interviewed one of the greatest, he's considered the historian in the Palio. I met this guy, filmed him and stuff, because uh, we do a lot of video now when I do these pictures. And so I, I um, his wife, as I'm describing the photograph, starts going like this to him. And, I, and he looks at me and he goes, I just want to let you know, I, I'm actually the director of the Palio. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I said, you're filming. He goes, I, Stephen, he goes, this picture, I just can't get over this picture. So it's so incredible. For him to tell me that I got it right, it was just like the best. So anyway, um, so here's a detail. Look at this. Yeah. It's the false start. Yeah, there's the false start. Here's the race. They're going crazy. You can actually see there's a horse hitting the wall here. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. This is a uh, uh, Russia day to night. Uh, I was, uh, found out, I was shooting this on the gum building, and I found out after I did this picture that uh, Mr. P, that's who they call Putin, had uh, the entire thing wired. So everything we were saying was being recorded and stuff. <laughs> so I was telling him how much I love Trump. <laughs> that's a detail just to give you an idea of the resolution and stuff and look at the shape no scaffolding yeah so clean yeah and then um, this is Jerusalem mm. and you know my father uh, when my dad was uh, um, when I was a little boy my father used to always say to me he goes you know Stephen you're a high priest and I go, does that mean I still have to go to Hebrew school? And he goes, yes, you have to go to Hebrew school. I go, well, what does it mean? He said, well, we're called Kohanes, which were direct descendants from Aaron, Moses' brother. Oh, I said, that's good. So I kind of like... <laughs> still have to be circumcised? <laughs> exactly. So fast forward, I've never been to Israel ever in my life. 40 years later, I end up, I'm going to go. And I... Um, I want to do a definitive picture of the Western Wall. So I start doing this research, and it turns out there's once a year where, um, where they have, uh, actually twice a year, where all these people come in to, the, the, to pray at the Western Wall. And it's a thing called the blessings. And uh, I go, I want to do it on this day, but I want to drink during Sukkot, which is in the fall and the weather and everything. Okay, so I, I know exactly, I do a lot of Google Earth study, and I knew exactly where I wanted to be. I had to get access into this this one property took three months, and this guy got it, and he was a very deeply religious man. And he, we get there at one o'clock in the morning, I'm setting up my camera, and I said, you know, um, I said, listen, he looks at me and he goes, Wilkes, are you Jewish? I go, yeah, yeah, I'm Jewish. He goes, do you have any idea what this day is about? Huh? I said, the day that everybody comes out to pray. He goes, this is the day that the Kohanim come to bless everybody. And my mouth drops like this. He goes, are you a Kohen? I go, yeah. He goes, do you realize? Everybody who comes here today is to be blessed by you and your brethren. He says, all those guys in the front row wearing the talises, those are the Kohanim. Mm. And so I'm like, oh my goodness. So I, I could never get down there. They, I never would have gotten back. That's, it was a sea of people for about 10 hours. And so, but I did say my prayers during this whole experience. It was really special. Wow. So people always ask me, what's a special one? This is one that's special. These are all the Kohanim. And those are, the, you can see they wear the, the white talises and they, um, they say that uh, the, the Kohanim the, 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 in religion is um, that our prayers are the first one God hears because you're considered a high priest. So I don't know what that really, you know, but it's a, it's a kind of a beautiful thing. Um, this is Tel Aviv. This was Benedict's favorite detail. Um, those are the dogs screwing each other. Can you see oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 That was Benedict. I love that. He said, we got all the dogs in there. <laughs> this is uh, wow. my pink flamingos. Yeah, the pink flamingos. This is, uh, this is in um, um, Lake Bregoria in, in uh, no, no, in Kenya. 
In Kenya. In Kenya, yeah, yeah Lake, Lake Bogoria. And, and you see this, this is one moment, and that is a detail of that one moment. So I've never seen anything quite like that uh, experientially. In my life. Kelly looking at flamingo, there are only like yeah. thirty in the whole. So this <laughs> is so this is what you're going to see now. So this next spread is going to be my Serengeti photograph, right, day and night. Here's what it talks about: twenty six hours in a crocodile blind during a drought. All these competitive species share one watering hole, and they never so much as grunted at each other. They seem to understand the act of sharing. That when it came to water, they had to drop their behavioral instincts, and that everyone gets to drink. I drove through that area not knowing where the water source was when I spotted the zebras coated in black in a viscous mud. I followed them and they led me right to the watering hole. I knew this was going to be the picture. So this is a detail of my Serengeti picture. <laughs> oh. oh my God. Jeffrey, would you like to say a, a succinct word or two about this? He's fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> remove some animals, don't you? Well, like, it's all based on time. So like this uh -huh. is the morning. And uh -huh. so for the, when you see an animal like this, he moves out of the way, I get a picture like that. I create a master plate, you know, oh. with as few animals as possible. But I to be see. honest, people say to me, oh, there's no way there were that many animals there. I go, really? I'll show you a single frame where you can't see water. That's how many animals oh. I had in here. So it's, it's, it's based on time and I'm, I create really what my memory is, the best moments of that day. So these guys came out, and this was like at a Disney movie. The family was showing them, this is what it looks like in Africa. And they were like talking to these meerkats. They were just, it, I'm telling you, it was like a Disney movie. And all of a sudden, this wildebeest, you know, they're having this great little tour, and the children are having so much fun. And this wildebeest goes, Arr! and they go, ah! <laughs> and they just, they just left instantly. I got one frame and it was just, you know, fantastic. But you, if you watch, you can actually see the animals coming in. You can see the migration. Look, in the distance. This is in the morning. As time changes, time, light is moving this way. This, you can see the light rotate. Now it's behind them. This is one moment, okay? This happened in one moment. And I'll tell you the story behind it. I shoot such large files that almost every three hours I have to wipe my computer just to have it functional. And in the early days when I did this, I wasn't really shooting to card that much, so I, I, what my, my system would unplug in five minutes and I usually I was back up again. So I have high anxiety when this is happening because I'm completely terrified I'm going to miss something because I'm so hyper-focused. I'm thinking, lion's going to come for a kill, I'm not going to have the camera up, all this stuff is going on. And suddenly, um, he looks at me, everything's been pretty calm, I'm not seeing anything really going on, it's pretty quiet. And he looks at me, he goes, you're live, Stephen. I go, great. I'm shooting in a crocodile blind. I'm about 15 feet up in the air, 20 feet in the air, and I have a window, a 24 by 36 window that I'm shooting at. So I have to lean my head out the window to really see what's coming left or right. I lean my head out the window, and this entire family is like, like the Jungle Book. Oh, hope we've got, you know, and they're marching away, and I'm going, oh my God! I was shooting so fast, I couldn't cock the shutter fast enough. I had my my assistant going, I was going, cock, cock. <laughs> they were just boom, 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 boom. And to see this little baby, I mean, the gesture, um, it was like Jungle Book. Question, yeah. where is this light coming from? So that's backlit. So the sun, this is in the, in the uh, afternoon. So the sun is up higher. Yeah. So what's happening is time changes. You're going this way. See how the sun's rotating? You can see it here. Look at the way the light rotates on these animals. Time is changing this way. I wish I had the whole image, but when I show you the whole image, you'll see. But, but uh, what caused the light to happen? Oh, the light to happen is from dust. Okay, uh, that's yeah, what the I dust, thought. the animal. So it's so dry. This so is you, the thing. You're very lucky. Oh, so the lucky. Dust could have gone the oh, other way. way. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It was fantastic the way the dust went. Everything had to work. It, look at this. There's a. You can see. There's a detail on the night side. You actually see a hyena at night in the picture. Yeah. Yeah, but the dust was magical. I mean, it, the way it backlit was fantastic. And it, that only happens because I'm in a I want to ask you a question. Yeah. And everybody else here probably knows the answer. It's probably a stupid question. So the so your shutter is open the, the no. whole time? No. Individual. Individual. A million, no. Separate, a million yeah. separate pictures. Yeah, no, it's, I, I shoot on average about 1,500 to 2,000, 12 to, to 2,000 images on average. And but out of those 2,000, I pick 50 of the best moments. And they're seamlessly layered. This is a detail 
of my Varanasi shot, a detail. Look at this. You can see the flowers coming in. If you see this whole image, you can where, go, oh my God, it? Varanasi. India. India in India, Varanasi. So it's That's a where my boat picture was. Yeah, exactly. Are this you? is this gives you an idea of, again, the effect of the picture. This is the uh, Ard Kumela Festival. I was in a police tower for 18 hours doing this picture. And so look at this guy. Do you see how a single figure can create that kind of power in a photograph? Look at this. This is a detail of that picture. Oh, oh Lord. He's letting himself go to God. That's what he's doing. And yet in this, in the scale, when you look at it, his power is just ever present. He pulls himself, you know, he pulls all of that into it. Is this the total picture? Yeah, that's the whole picture. Wow. That's the whole photograph. Are we yeah. shooting multi-layer panoramics, basically? Multi oh yeah, well it's all done through layering, yeah. I think so. <laughs> Panoramic yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. is an understatement. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Yeah, I can't, I can't swing the camera. Uh, it's a phase, I don't know what back he's using. Yeah. What phase back are you using? I use different lenses, but I'm, you know, what I'm really interested in, um, I think what I'm developing, I'll talk more about it tonight, is, uh, is, is the way the human eye sees. So one of the things that people identify with in my work is there's a, um, uh, a familiarity with um, the, 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 the point of view. There's a intimacy yeah. mm -hmm. because I'm very interested in replicating what the, how I, the eye sees, not the way a camera sees. And that's the difference. Are, of one are of you these shooting just cameras. one camera at a time, yes. or do you have a rack? rack of no, movies? no, one camera. Yeah, one camera. Wow, and, uh, that's gutsy. Yeah. It's called a Russian roulette. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not using no, I'm firewiring into a computer, so I see everything I get. Yeah, I know, but, I know but, if there's a problem. But I thought you might yeah. be doing the panorama uh, yeah. with, you know, simultaneously with overlapping. Oh cameras. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I it, the the um I I did a uh, one you'll see um with the new ca um, Nikon Z camera. They commissioned me to do it day to night, which was like somebody asking you to go into the you know Game Seven of the World Series for the Yankees, play center field, and they give you a, your right hand and they give you a left eagle up. You know, <laughs> nothing, nothing difficult. Nothing uh, uh, it's, I don't know if I have it in here, uh, but I'll show it to you guys on the screen. So this is Shanghai, um, day to night. Cool. Be there in September. So the, the this is. Frame is just kind of cropping the regular frame. Yeah. Well, it's it's not. Um, it's it's. It's not so much, yeah, well, yeah, it's, you you're, could look at it like kind of, cropping, yeah, you're but, not yeah, I, 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 I am, I'm, I'm, you know, some of them are, are from, the, there's no stitching, and some of them I have expanded the frame, so okay. there's, you know, more um, space, but it's, it's, what it is, is I'm, um, I'm after a certain kind of scale, and I think most people, when you look at uh, photographs, Lenses create certain relationships, and I'm interested in, in, in breaking those relationships. Oh, it's fantastic. He's in here for one reason. This is the single question I get most of the it says, it says, no more than one question per customer. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was the greatest fucking line yeah. I ever heard. I said, that he's going in my picture. It, you know, that, that was it. He was, he was doing that. You this is got those cool umbrellas. Oh, yeah, well, you can't well, believe you day. walk into this wow. print and you just see these guys is selling Ipanema? things. Ipanema Beach, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. I was mugged here. My my second date, and I was in a favela, and I was actually uh, held up at gunpoint. And so it was a very tragic experience. And thank God nobody died, but I got everything was stolen. All my equipment was stolen. My computer what? was stolen. Everything. Sure. I had to flee uh, from there because. I was going to give a whole lecture to these school kids in the favela, and I ended up. Um, I ended up. They knew where I was, and they knew who I was, and they were afraid that I had a digital copy of the files because I didn't realize that what I was photographing, they were like this insignificant thing in a scene. They were dealing drugs, and so they felt oh. that I was going to use my pictures to sort of impl implicate them in a, in a. Did you have a file? Something. My assistant had backed up, but they got the computer and they wiped everything. But then they, they started thinking, well, what happens if you got another copy of it, like on a, on a hard drive or something? So the thought was they were they were going to come for us, you know, and, and so it, that was uh, unbelievably scary. Did I, this I happen it. before that? Or after this, that? this happened after I did this picture. So I was on the front page of what is like the New York Times, the mm -hmm. Arts and Leisure section. They were celebrating my work. And so these guys knew that who I was, that I was an artist, I wasn't a criminal, I, I wasn't working for the government, you know. And it was, I was looking to do this really beautiful picture in this favela, and uh, it just got out of hand. Uh, the guy who supposedly had cleared us never went to the top boss, and the top boss found out about it, and then all, all hell broke loose. I, I, I can't even tell you what an experience it was. 
but um, Good and yeah, yeah, it's so scary. You get mugged. Of course, this is Coney Island. This is the cover of the book. This is a detail of Coney Island. It's my favorite guy with the, you know, the wife beater T-shirt that he's. <laughs> see that guy? Yeah. Is that a tan? Yeah, it's a tan line. Yeah, and then uh, that's a detail. The main image is actually um, uh, uh, Bethesda Fountain, day to night. So we're missing quite a few images here, guys. But this is the first one I did. This is the High Line with Brian. That was and, very yeah, first. very first one I did, and Brian set this up. It was unbelievable. He actually, we had a thunderstorm, and he lowered the cherry picker uh, uh, with our. Who was the other assistant? Um, I think it was Josh. Josh, yeah, yeah Josh yeah, Marinelli. And Josh, Josh dropped the line, and, uh, and 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 Brian marked it off. And the, sure enough, major you know major electrical like storm. Like but. We, we didn't, this was like, probably, I, I said, there's no way we're gonna get back to the same place. Brian raised it up after the thunderstorm moved. It was like, we clicked the shutter, the picture, you know how you can, in, in Lightroom or, or Capture One, you just go one picture to the next, perfect. No jump, nothing. Uh, <laughs> it was unbelievable. Try it again, just to see if it's Yeah, try it again, <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think so. Uh, New York, uh, of course, Fifth Avenue. So we're going back now to New York. Now time is changing, we're going into the fall. This is a detail, so the main image I don't have here. This is, again, one of those studies of color, fall foliage uh, from the view of the Essex House of Central Park. So that's uh, the left side of the picture. This is the right side of the picture detail. Can I ask you a question sure. about <laughs> economics? <laughs> economics? What? Could I ask you a question? Go ahead, yeah. I mean, this took you 10 years with yeah. assistance and travel and all the... Lift. I yeah. mean, how did I do it? Yeah, I, can, I, I sell my work. I mean, I've, I've been blessed. I've been able to sell my art, and that my, my my the people who collect my work have actually paid for me to create this work. And then I was fortunate enough that the Geographic recognized what I was doing, and they got behind it. And I've gotten grants now to do wildlife with them. And, Does Tashin come in there someplace Tashin, financially? Yeah, well, Tashin came in and 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 uh, certainly um, uh, gave me a wonderful advance on my book, and, and so I was able to. Um, you know, to use that advance to finish the work that I needed to do. Because this is a 10 year project and, and, yeah, and I'm not massive. independently wealthy or anything like that, but I've, I've paid for everything and I've made my living as a fine artist. Now I really don't do very much commercial work anymore. You know, it's a handful of things, yeah. but most of what I do is really my art. And, and so I, I came to a point where, you know, and he used to say this all to me at the time, you know, you get to a point where you get on that commercial wheel and it's really hard to get off and you need to make time for your own work. And I always did that. And I got to a point in my career where I, I was selling my photographs and there's this moment where it was like, you know, gosh, I made as much money shooting my you know, jobs as I did almost selling my art. And I looked at my wife and I said, you know something, I'm, I'm doing this part time. I need to focus on just doing my art. And that was the moment I started creating Day to Night. And that was, that's what had happened. Yeah. Did you oversimplify your what? relationship? Oh, give up. <laughs> Just don't start, will you please? <laughs> don't start. She's coming tonight. You better behave yourself. <laughs> you know what he did the first time he met my wife? He looked at he goes, What are your intentions? <laughs>